In this video, we're going to jump right into the anatomical and biomechanical analysis of the three knockdown punches that Ryan Garcia delivered last night against Devin Haney. All right, so we're going to start with the knockdown that happened in the seventh round with about two minutes and 15 seconds left. And if you watch the fight, you'll realize that Garcia landed a pretty good left hook on Devin Haney in the first round, kind of shook him a bit, but didn't knock him down. So this is the one we're going to start with, okay? And how we're going to do this is I'm going to explain this sort of like a spring because this is how all really good strikers create their potential energy to ultimately end up landing their strikes in an effective way. Throughout this, I'll be using the Human Anatomy Atlas app with, to explain some of the anatomy behind all this as well. Every single time we talk about an aspect of this punch, think of it like pushing down a spring one more level and ultimately to result in just letting go that spring and create kinetic energy to distribute through their opponent. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the back foot. Okay, like every, again, like every good striker, they use the energy that they can create from the ground and deliver it to their opponent in the most efficient way possible. So he shifts his weight forward first. He gets his center of gravity moving towards his opponent, pushing off of the back leg with hip extension. We'll mainly focus here at the hips and then work our way up with hip extension, and he loads that front leg right there, okay? Now the second thing I want you to now push down, push down the, the spring one more time. So loads the front leg. The second thing I want you to, we're gonna move up the chain into the hips. And arguably one of the biggest characteristics or one of the, the most defining characteristics of athletic ability is the ability to dissociate the hips from the, the trunk, right? Being able to, to keep your shoulders forward and move your hips one way or another. We see this in all kind of athletic endeavors from any other combat sports like jiu-jitsu or Muay Thai uh, to football and basketball being able to switch your hips and move laterally and rotationally, okay? So Ryan Garcia rotates his hips lightning fast, okay? Using muscles like, that are involved in lumbopelvic control like the internal and external obliques. We've got the big multifidus, we've got quadratus lumborum. All of those muscles work in synergy to help rotate the hips or flex and extend the hips, okay? We call this lumbopelvic control. He's got incredible lumbopelvic control here. So rotates the hips, Okay, push down the spring one more time. Let's move up to the thoracic spine uh, where we see muscles like the middle and middle trap and rhomboid. They're not only helping him with, with thoracic rotation on the right side of his body, but they're also the, kind of bring the, the right shoulder back towards us. But he's, he's also using scapular retraction and horizontal abduction of the shoulder, the glenohumeral joint, to keep that, that muscle or the, keep that, that arm kind of wound back so that whenever he rotates his arm through, it's pretty much just being used as a weapon. Okay, so a lot of shoulder and scapular stability here. All right, so as he rotates his thoracic spine, his arm is staying in the same position. And then when he chooses to, right there, he kind of switches from stability or isometric contraction, meaning that they're producing force, just not moving in muscle length, to concentric contraction of muscles like the pecs uh, and the anterior delt that brings horizontal adduction, right? And that's, that's essentially the movement of a hook, right? And then all of that, remember, that spring was almost fully compressed here, right? And then as he lets go, boom, that kinetic energy or potential energy creating in, or um, transforming into kinetic energy all the way into Devin Haney uh, and knocking him down, okay? So let's watch it. Full speed, super fast. This is like you can't really see any of the components, but let's slow it down one more time. So he pushes off his back leg, gets his center of mass shift and forward. As he does that, he rotates his hips. Then he rotates his thoracic spine, keeping his arm or his arm or scapula abduct or scapula retracted, horizontally abducted, so that he can use that as a weapon after all of this potential energy is let go right there concentric contraction of the pec and the anterior delt across Devin Haney's face. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is this hell of a three piece in the 10th round with about two minutes and 30 seconds left, two minutes and 36 seconds left. Uh, we'll let it run through real quick, <laughs> it's super fast. All right, let's pause it and move it back here. So this one isn't really to show very much of Garcia's power. I mean, he's got him moving forward. He gets him to drop his hands and then he connects really well with the third. But, and 
you could tell because he's actually kind of like levitate or uh, levitating, uh, uh, kind of moving in midair as he throws this. So he's not able to generate much power from the ground. Uh, but the real reason why I think this results in a knockout ha actually happens to be uh, something that's happening in Devin Haney's body, particularly the neck. Uh, I've done a video on the physiology of a knockout, uh, and what we see and what they think happens is that quick rotational force causes a stretching of the nerves that lead from the neck all the way up into the brain. And that quick rotational force actually causes the acute loss of consciousness. Right? We see this in a lot of different uh, sports we see it in MMA we see it definitely see it in boxing uh, and sometimes we even see it in, in sports like football where they'll get hit from the side and that quick whiplash action causes a traction in those nerves and eliminates the ability really quickly for that action potential uh, to, to travel to the brain uh, and it causes the acute loss of consciousness all right so quick rotational force and that is really the punch that gets him there as he comes down and you can see this even better in the third knockdown. Okay, so this is probably my favorite one to show for the actual mechanics of, like the physiology of being knocked out acutely. So he gets him a little bit with the right there, but the one that really lights out, boom. And I want you to watch it full speed once so that you can see what I'm talking about. Well, well you can't really see there. But the reason that we think that this is the case Right, that really that that shock to the nervous system from that axonal stretching that happens is watch as soon as he makes contact that neck before it even whips back around you can see his eyes kind of rolled back to the back of his head he's already knocked out so it really is that sort of it's almost like you're taking a rubber band and you just quickly tighten it and that that retraction of the the rubber band is actually what knocks him out so really quick rotational force whiplash boom and you see Ryan Ryan actually gets the ability to generate a lot of force from that lead hook like he did in the first punch uh, but yeah Devin Haney didn't stand a chance on this one I mean it's the 11th round he's already taken a beating um, his nervous system was already kind of shot from taking a bunch of shots to the head I'm sure uh, and that one just kind of was the icing on top of the cake there all right, I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. Let me know if there are any other movements or fights that you want me to analyze down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.